Today, as we celebrate the centennial of St. Joseph Honey Creek's Day Chapel, our first rock church, we trace our heritage from the mid-19th century German immigrants who settled into the Texas Hill Country to the early 20th century construction by St. Joseph Honey Creek parishioners of our old stone church. From 1844 to 1847, a German organization called the Adelsverein transported thousands of colonists to Texas, establishing two instant cities with populations in the hundreds, New Braunfels and Fredericksburg. Although Texas had become a state in 1845, there was not an immediate rush of settlers because of the presence of hostile Native Americans. But soon the settlements of New Braunfels and Fredericksburg opened the doors to more German immigrants and non-German settlers luring them into the Texas Hill Country. Just a few years after the conclusion of the Civil War, the area around Honey Creek began receiving settlers. In 1867, five Catholic families linked to the establishment of Honey Creek and St. Joseph Honey Creek Catholic Church arranged for individual land surveys. The epicenter of this land was two miles north of our current site. George Frederick Coons, Michael Bechtel, Johann Kneiper, H.R. Mose, and Casper Mose were joined shortly thereafter by three other Catholic families, Ocker, Lux, and Shale. While the Honey Creek name appeared on land surveys as early as 1846, family heritage holds, the children were sent on an errand to collect spring water from their creek and encountered large swarms of bees. After more than one encounter, the children are credited with saying, where there are so many bees, there must be honey, reinforcing the Honey Creek name. Father John Kospel was a circuit priest who did a lot of writing in Comal and Kendall counties, reaching out to pockets of Catholic families. He would stop at family homes, including Honey Creeks, to perform ceremonies. In 1876, the year of St. Joseph Honey Creek's founding, Father Kosbel began keeping separate records for the religious rites involving our parishioners. For the next 22 years, St. Joseph Honey Creek was tended to by circuit priests, primarily out of St. Peter's and Burney. The first church was a small cedar structure. However, from stories passed down through the generations, it has been learned that within a year, the church was destroyed by fire. The exact date of this occurrence is not known. Another cedar log church was then erected. Both of these churches were on Michael Bechtel's land, as was the first cemetery for the Catholic families in the area. In the early 1890s, St. Joseph Honey Creek relocated from the creek to our current site after the Shale family provided one acre of land on the Bernie New Braunfels Road. As one old timer said, the church kept its original name, although there was no creek nearby, nor was there any honey. In 1892, a new large wood frame church was built. Father Henry Garlick, who coordinated the relocation and construction of our new church, operated out of Bernie. When he left in 1892, St. Joseph Honey Creek continued to be supported by other priests from Bernie's St. Peter's. 1898 was the year Father Dresel arrived. As related by one of the early parishioners, Alfred Engel, Honey Creek received its first resident priest in the person of Virgilius Dresel. He was all German, barely could talk or understand a word of English, and since all the people of the parish were of German descent, the bishop thought this Honey Creek was the ideal place for him. He was originally from Austria. Little did anyone know that his arrival would impact and shape St. Joseph Honey Creek for decades. Father was considered sickly, but didn't act like it. He helped construct his first residence and, in 1899, consecrated a new mission church in his jurisdiction at Twin Sisters. He commemorated the dogma of the 50th anniversary of the Immaculate Conception in 1904 
by constructing the beautiful chapel at the top of the hill. But Father Dressel's grandest physical legacy was still to come, the old stone church. Tucked away in another early parishioner's diary, Alfred Shale details one of Father Dressel's activities. He also founded a church fund. In the 1905 Archdiocese Report, he lists $378.15 fund of church building. Jumping to the 1909 Report, he pens fund of church building, $2,667.05. So with money in the fund and plenty of available rock in the area, these hardy Germans would soon launch into the construction phase. This would be a major undertaking, like the construction of the old Spanish mission churches of the 18th century. Tremendous height from floor to ceiling, major vaulting, and a vast open space without center posts. Due to its massive size, the need for professional assistance emerges from our files. First, there is a specifications document. On its cover is inscribed, Stone Church. For Catholic Congregation, City of Honey Creek, State of Texas. On the pre-printed cover of the specifications is the name of a well-known San Antonio architect, Leo M. J. Delman. Included in the packet are numerous details, such as the apex of the bell tower spire was originally to be clad in slate. The second technical document is the archived parish blueprints, also with Mr. Dealman's name. With it, we are introduced to one of the first enigmas surrounding this church's construction. The drawings look vaguely like our old church in layout and stature, but most of the other features do not match, and there is nothing on the prints themselves tying them to St. Joseph's. Since the blueprints are much more ornate in detail than the church on our grounds, it is speculated that the parish decided to cut corners and had a generic set of blueprints delivered, or decided to save money by recycling a set of prints that was utilized in the construction of another church. One concluding theory is that after getting the plans in hand, the priest and parishioners decided to cut expenses and or furnish off the church's exterior with a different look and simpler German styling. In our early parishioners' depictions of this historical event, each one uses a different estimate of dates and time frames of key events. Our early parishioners, Mr. Engel and Mr. Shale, both guardedly introduce the efforts to construct the parish's first rock church. Mr. Shale wrote, and in 1910, the new rock church was started. Again, plenty of objections and commotions were brought about by our good, busy Father Dressel. Mr. Ingalls' account follows. So after different meetings and discussions, he got serious, and this project began to get underway. However, there was only a small amount of money on hand and not 100% of cooperation or willingness to go along with the idea. From these pioneers, it is obvious that there was a difference of opinion between the priest and his congregation over the construction of the church. Independent of the specifications, blueprints, and design, the men of the parish supplied the manpower. The rock that was used to build the church was quarried just over the hill, less than two football fields away from the church's front door at the adjacent Lawbach family's property. The Lawbachs were St. Joseph parishioners. Synthesizing family lore in church documents, construction most likely began in 1909, proceeding to a sufficient level by 1910, as highlighted in the neatly chiseled cap rock over the archway to the church's main entrance door. Then, construction of the church slowed to a crawl before coming to a complete stop. As Mr. Engel describes, money was about exhausted, and field work took away most of the free working help. And so, with the walls about halfway up, 
the building came to a halt. All this was very discouraging for the father, and since he had wanted to go back to his homeland, Tyrol, Austria, for rest and vacation, he decided this would be a good time to do so. Perhaps things would change by the time he returned. After about three months, Father Dressel returned to Honey Creek. New energy had developed, and the work on the church was resumed. Mary Schwegman wrote a 1934 article in the September issue of Catholic Layman, pinpointing the year. During 1910, Father Dressel visited his birthplace at Bozen in Tyrol, and upon arrival there, it is said that one of his first acts was to climb to a shrine of Maria Weisenstein on a mountain 1,300 meter high and pray for his beloved parishioners in the hill country around Honey Creek and for added strength and courage to carry on his missionary activities in his sphere of duty so far, far away. Again, in robust health and fortified spiritually, he returned to Texas. So Father Dressel returned to St. Joseph and his helpful parishioners. His church was handmade by its parishioners, rock by rock, maneuvering and hoisting immense blocks of rock more than 50 and 60 feet in the air, nearly six stories up to the top bell tower. It has been said that the height of the church from the ground at its front entrance to the top of its cross is more than 70 feet. File blueprints show 73 feet. With renewed energy, the construction of the Rock Church continued until complete in late 1912 or early 1913. Alfred Engel's final words on the church construction are, and dedicated, debt-free. While around $200 of debt is carried on the books for the years 1913 through 1916, on the 1917 report, the balance is zero. Father Dressel and the parishioners of St. Joseph Honey Creek had pulled it off. That they built a beautiful church cannot be denied. And their efforts did not stop with the edifice itself. Today's parishioners who attend daily mass or just visit the day chapel for reflection are treated to a clean, simple interior design with wonderful hand-painted canopies and backdrops. As charming as the interior appears today, it was even more dramatic prior to the Second Vatican Council. Extensive woodwork, made to look like marble, surrounded the altar. The church's interior was an amazing wedding cake-like creation of niches and platforms that dazzled and cradled all the statuary. Unfortunately, to comply with the Second Vatican Council, which required that the sanctuary of an existing church be adapted with the priest facing the congregation during Mass, these ornate altar details, as well as a very elaborate pulpit, were removed. Unfortunately, in the process, we lost a part of our heritage. While these physical relics were lost, fortunately, lifetimes of religious and family heritage developed until the dedication of the new church in 2006, the Old Stone Church served as the focal point of St. Joseph Honey Creek's activities as parishioners and priests created 94 years worth of history. Of all the events in St. Joseph Honey Creek's legacy, over 135 years of heritage, the construction 100 years ago of our Old Stone Church today's day chapel turns out to be both a hallmark and a landmark. This presentation was developed as a memorial. We honor and pray for those families and priests who sustained and supported our parish over the years.